Uh, good morning, gaming group. I thought I would go over my board game collection with you. Uh, as you can see, I'm sort of at breaking point as far as uh, space for games has gone, so I do need to get rid of some of these. But my collection has changed over the last... I mean, I've been playing games for about six, seven years or so now, and games come and go, and I sell them and get new ones. But I thought I'd go over them, so let's have a little look here. So first of all, uh, we've got Fog of Love which is a uh, two-player dating simulator. Um, there's no real winning or losing it, you just kind of play it for the story. But uh, it's, it's, certain, it's certainly interesting, uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, got Cry Havoc, which is like a little miniature, very miniature actually, war game. Uh, very good, I enjoy that. Uh, Cash and Guns, uh, which is a party game. It's basically Reservoir Dogs, the board game. Um, you are gangsters trying to split up your money after a big heist and you point toy guns at each other. Castle Panic, a uh, cooperative game uh, where you are protecting your castle from uh, orcs and goblins and trolls that are coming in through the forest. Very difficult, I've only won it a few times but it's good fun. Um, Pandemic and an expansion. This is where gaming started for me really. Pandemic was the first kind of modern board game where I thought yes this, this is great stuff and like it, it's still great stuff. It's still probably one of the best games I've made. Uh, perfect game to get people into the hobby. Uh, Manhattan Project is a worker placement game where you're building a, it's a nuclear arms race basically. Uh, you're racing to build nuclear missiles. Carcassonne, which is a classic tile laying game. Uh, get points uh, depending on where you put your peoples. Um, Pompeii. Pompeii is a great game. Um, it's out of print now. It's actually quite expensive to buy. Uh, but basically it's set uh, just before um, <clears throat> Mount Vesuvius erupts. You are placing as many people into the city as possible and then halfway through the game it erupts and you're trying to get people out. I love games that kind of change halfway through. Uh, we have Luchador Mexican Wrestling Dice which is uh, it comes with an actual uh, little ring uh, that you throw your dice in and it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a uh, it's kind of kind of cool. It's, it's a bit much. <laughs> There's no real need for it. You can just roll the dice. You don't need the ring, but it does make it look quite cool. Hair in the Tortoise. This game is, I think, the original print was in the 70s, and it's it's a it's a racing game. Uh, you're just getting trying to get to the end. Um, but instead of rolling dice for movement, you have to pay pay a cost uh, in carrots in this game. So, for example, if you wanted to move three spaces, it costs you six carrots. Uh, and it's a lot more tactical because to get carrots you have to move backwards so it's knowing when to, when to storm ahead and when to hold back is quite cool. Um, get Bit is a um, very, very small uh, game uh, for children really. Um, and it's about pirates trying to escape a shark and uh, it comes with a little, and the little arms and legs of the people come off so it's quite brutal. Um, Love Letter, very simple game. Uh, quite a classic game. I feel like this is one of those games that everyone has a copy of. Uh, and if you don't, you should. It's really good. Especially, we, we tend to play this a lot when we're waiting for our food to arrive at restaurants and stuff. Past the Pigs. Um, classic British game. Roll the pigs depending on how they land. You get uh, certain points. Quite cool. Uh, Kakalaka Poker. Kakalakan Poker. Or, this is the German version. Uh, it's called Cockroach Poker over here. Um, and basically, it's a, it's a bluffing game. Um, you're basically passing passing cards of different insects and trying to convince people what and what you have, what you have and what you haven't passed to them. It's, it's awesome, to be honest. It's, it's really good and it's like less than a tenner and it's it's fantastic. Uh, a pack of cards. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, playing cards, but they're they're quite good. Uh, billionaire, bill oh, Christ, billionaire banshee is um, kind of in the same vein as Cards Against Humanity. It's kind of a, there are rules to get points, but you just sort of plan it for the last. And it's basically a dating game. So you get you get given two cards, ones, and they represent a potential date. And one of them's a positive and one of them's a negative. So for example, a positive might be, um, they own every video game in the whole world. Uh, and the negative might be, um, but they have ridiculously hairy feet. And then you have to decide whether, you know, you discuss whether you would uh, date them or not. Mint Delivery, another little game. I love games that come in little boxes because it means you literally can fit them in your pocket and take them anywhere. 
Uh, it's a game about running around delivering mints. It's quite simple, but it's another one of those games that we can bust out just on a, on a on a restaurant table while we're waiting for our food, looking like massive dorks. Um, we've got what else have we got in here? We've got story cubes. We've got quite a few of these now, and they're, 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 they're quite cool. Um, they're just cubes with different pictures on them, and you roll them, and that helps you tell a story. That is it. It's, it's, it's to help you flex your imagination. Really great, great for great for small kids. Um, what is this one? See, some games are uh, some sort of drinking game. No idea. Uh, I don't know if you can see that one back there. That's a Viking game. It's from the Viking Museum. Uh, it's kind of like kind of like chess. Really? But apparently Vikings played it, it's actually quite good, but it's, it's pretty brutal for this. Uh, what else we Memoir 44? Great two player war game, great, just uh, the right amount of luck and strategy and all the miniatures look awesome. It's one of those games that when you set it up people kind of look over and thought, oh, that, looks, that looks cool. Especially when you set up like the, uh, you know, the D-Day landings or something, it looks amazing. Um, this little game in here, I bought this from a boot sale. It is the Super Mario Blockbusters card game from 1992, I want to say. Box has got a little bit of damage. And um, it's a great nostalgia trip. I bought, I bought this at a boot sale for like three quid and I thought, oh, that's a good find. That'd be, that'd be worth some money. It's not. It's worth about a tenner. So I've just kept it. Um... <clears throat> Go Dinka. Little cube playing puzzle game. This game's this game this game's pretty cool. I haven't busted this out very much. Um, it, it's one of those thinking games where I struggle. <laughs> I really struggle. As soon as there's puzzles and tiles and stuff, I, I just think my brain is not wired enough to kind of recognise patterns and tiles. But I love it. I love it. Um, we've got. Oh my god! I can't even remember what this game's called. Um, but the box, the box got really damaged. So we decided to put it in this little chest, and it's um, it's a dungeon delving game, um, and it's, it's, I think as far as I can remember, it's like a push your luck game. So you can keep going further in the dungeon and get better treasure, but also you risk losing the treasure because it's harder the deeper you go into the dungeon. Um, I just thought, oh, I'm going to play this again at some point and try and remind myself. I do remember enjoying it. Uh, this was a Christmas present from someone a couple of years ago, I think. Super Mario Power Up game. I don't remember this being anything special. I, I mean, like, it's fine. I don't remember it being terrible, but, um, yeah, it, it's, it's clearly just a kind of licensed cash grab. Nothing nothing exciting. But uh, I love, the, obviously, the artwork. You know, I'm a big, big, big video game fan, so definitely nostalgic to play. Uh, Alias, I've never played. I don't know where. I, think, I, feel, it, I feel like this was a game that was on my mum and dad's shelf, and I just took it because it was a game. Cards Against Humanity, I hate this game. I hate Cards Against Humanity. I think it's for people that have no sense of humour <laughs> of their own. Uh, and not, not a fan, but I keep it because lots of people are fans. Um, so for party stuff. Uh, Geister Splits, another German game. Um, you have um, four or five little items and you basically have to grab the item that matches the card but sometimes the item doesn't match the card and you have to use case. Um, it's another one of those games that seems simple, but it, it really wrecks your brain. Uh, very frustrating, like great fun, but so frustrating. And uh, there's another little game hidden under there. What's that? Uh, let's have a look. I hope you can see this. I know, I know it's quite dark in here. I'm recording in the morning. Flux. Flux is a card game, uh, really simple. And the rules keep changing. So the cards might say something like, from now on, pick up two cards instead of one and then someone might play another card that says something completely different okay small world this is kind of like a lot of these games are like, are like people like when i try to get people into games i always like try and say uh you know it's like this but better and small world is basically risk but much better you um you play you choose a race and an ability and you can match them up, so you might have flying elves, or you might have tunneling humans, and it's uh, area control. It's, it's essentially risk, but it's much better. Machikoro, you're trying to build a town. A very simple game, this. I can teach this to children. Uh, love it. Uh, zombies, this, this was a Christmas present. Now, the actual game, 
I, I quite, it's all right. I quite like the game, but the components are, are awful. Like the, the, the actual tiles are so flimsy, it's impossible to keep the game set up without it moving around. And yeah, not not. It, it's a shame. It's a shame. So I, 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 I mean, obviously, because of the theming, I would, people will come over and go, "What game do you want to play?" Like, oh, zombies. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's, I'm not a fan of playing it just because of the components. So. I think this is quite an old game. I think this is like 20 odd years old. And there's probably new editions now. And there's probably deluxe editions. But if you ever come across, if you ever want the game and you come across this version of it, I would stay clear. To be honest, um, we got got given this uh, for Christmas this year actually. Uh, a jailbreak escape room game. No idea. Uh, escape room games always probably fun. Um, no idea what that'd be like. Odin's Ravens, a great two-player racing game. A big fan. Of, um, most of the time, it's just me and my wife. Especially this year, it's just me and my wife playing these games. So two-player games, we always uh, keep. She's a big fan of mythology, Greek, uh, Norse. So big win for her. Uh, Maki Staki. No idea what that is. Something to do with sushi, I imagine. Uh, that was another Christmas present that I haven't played yet. Let's put up there with other Christmas presents I haven't played. Um, Sewer of the Seas is uh, a game where you are dragons battling in the sky. And it's like a destruction derby for dragons, basically. It's uh, you're all flying around the map, and if you crash into each other, you're out. If you go off the board, you're out. And it, I think it supports up to like 10 odd people. Um, uh, eight, it says right there. Eight people, and that, it's, it's good fun. I love that. Hive, Hive is another one of those. It's a bit like chess. One, another one of those tile thinking games that I struggle with. I really love it, but uh, the wife will win 100% of the time. Um, but yeah, it's like chess, uh, Pete, you know, you have certain bugs and they can move in certain ways. Zombie Dice, I think it's another one of those games that I feel like just everyone has. Uh, obviously another one of those games that you can just play anywhere. You are zombies and you're trying to eat brains and avoid getting shot. I love it. Happy Salmon. Happy Salmon seems to be a game that not many people <laughs> know about, but basically um, you have a set of cards and they say things like pound it, high five, and if you match someone who's got that card, then you do the action. You high five them, or you fist bump them, or you give them a happy salmon, which is like kind of slapping your arms together like fins. Uh, it's stupid. It's really stupid, but uh, it never fails to get a laugh out of people. Um, Scroll, another one of those games where I'm like, well, it's like Pictionary, but better. It's basically Chinese whispers, uh, but Pictionary. Isn't it? It's like Telestrations. If you've ever heard of that, it's almost exactly that. But Scroll is a bit more. Um, Mature in its themes, let's say. So it's a bit more crass than Telestrations, but again, that, that's always hilarious. That's rack one. Done. What else? Do, where did we get up to? Imatep, Imatep, the jewel. So we've got a couple of jewel games here because we only play two-player games. Um, Imatep, the jewel. You're uh, pharaohs trying to build up a big city, and you're getting materials off of boats and trying to stop other people getting materials. Good stuff. Seven Wonders Jewel. So I've never played Seven Wonders. Never. And after I've played this version of it, I don't think I need to. I, I just really, this game's almost perfect. Might be the best two-player game we've got. Uh, enough strategy um, to really get your get your teeth sunk into. Really enjoy it. Resistance. Resistance. No. <laughs> Resistance is, is. I mean, it, there's so many. Uh, it's a bluffing game. Uh, like hidden identity game and there's so many of these now but I think the resistance was the first apart from like wink murder at school this is one of the first ones I really got into and I, it's one of those games that if I'm playing with new people if I've got new people coming over like this is it we're playing this I mean it's been updated now with the coup and there's a new one coming out called blood on the clock tower this looks insane it's it's no real different to ultimate werewolf but for whatever reason this tiny box uh, is always a winner Code names, everyone knows code names. I, I feel like I feel like code names is going to be one of those ones that it, it, everyone's going to have. It's a, it's a modern classic. You're trying to identify where spies are on a board with, and whilst avoiding the opposite team spies. It's good times. It's good times. Animal point animal. It's a simple dexterity game where you're just uh, putting animals on animals. It's great for kids. Uh, I'm flying through these now. I just realised how many there are to get through. Takenoko. It's about uh, trying to grow a garden and uh, eating bamboo and growing bamboo and it's, it's, it's beautiful, like the colours on it are amazing I really enjoy that game uh, Sherlock Holmes Consultant Detective, this is a great for couples 
you, you actually do feel like you're uh, getting clues and you're searching through evidence to try and find out who did what and where and yeah I love this one uh, Formula D it's a Formula 1 racing game it's really great you have uh, like a little gearbox and depending on what gear you're in is what dice you roll uh, and you can spin out and damage your car and that sort of thing love that Treasure Island uh, one of you plays as Long John Silver and you hide the board, hide the treasure somewhere in secret and then the other players are trying to find the treasure and you give them clues for example oh it's um, within 10 feet it's, it's within 2 meters of this player or whatever so that, that doesn't make any sense but and then you know, the players have their own board and they have uh, compasses and rulers and they can eliminate where the treasure is and a really good time Brass Birmingham uh, is thematically the most boring game I've probably got <laughs> but it's really really good I think it's rated like number 2 or 3 on Board Game Geek uh, it's about build the Industrial Revolution in Birmingham, uh, building up coal and iron and uh, yeah, it's, it's so dull it, even to look at. I mean, the artwork itself is fine, but it's kind of a dull looking game. But as far as strategy goes, it is, it's deep. I really recommend it. Uh, Dixit, uh, another party game where you're giving cards with stunning artwork. And you're giving clues to try and lead people to that card. Uh, I think it's another one of those games that sort of everyone will know. Ticket to Ride. We all know what Ticket to Ride is. Uh, that's going to be a permanent fixture in the collection. I can't see that going anywhere. Mysterium. Uh, another one in the collection of... Um, you know, it's like this, but better. It's, it's Cluedo. It's basically Cluedo. You're trying to find out uh, who killed them, with what, where they killed them. Uh, but the twist is one of you plays as the deceased, one of you plays as the ghost of the victim and you're not allowed to talk, instead you give a series of clues via uh, really nice, nicely uh, drawn art cards um, and I love it, it's very very good. Uh, Thunderbirds game, this is a cooperative game, it's made by uh, Matt Leacock who made Pandemic and it's hard as nails, it is not suitable for children whatsoever, I don't think I've ever won it. Um, which I think, to be honest, that's the reason I haven't sold it. I, I have to beat it before I can sell it. Uh, Revolution is uh, a, a blind bidding game where you're trying to build the greatest support for your revolution to take over the town. It's actually uh, very good. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is there's not much interactivity between players. Um, I do tend to like games where you're kind of you, you speak and you you know you're having fun basically, and the game is good. It's a good game. Um, but I feel like it's, it's it, I think it feels like one of them games that couldn't it didn't have to be a ball game. It could have been a video game that you play online if that makes any sense. Oh god, greedy greedy goblins. Uh, this is <laughs> make sure you got space to play this. This is one of those games where you just sort of have loads of stuff in the middle. Someone says go, and then you have to grab loads of stuff and put them in mines. And if you accidentally grab too many sticks of dynamite, your uh, mine blows up and you don't get anything. Um, it's good. I like it. Uh, Smash up another old school game uh, where it's a card game and you are. Uh, God, it's been a while since I played this one. How do, I t how do I describe it? It's a card game, it's good, you smash up stuff. Uh, Forbidden, this is the third game it, it, we've got here, this uh, from Matt Leacock, pan, uh, Pandemic Guy. Uh, and it's good, it's, 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 I mean, all, all of his games have kind of similar mechanics. Like if you play a, if you play a Matt Leacock game, you, you know it without being told. Um, but this is a lot more simpler, it's a lot more, I don't, I don't know if it's easier to win, um, but it's certainly easier to understand. There's, le there's less rules than Thunderbirds or Pandemic, but I don't, I don't think it's actually any easier to win, just easier to kind of understand it going. King Domino, it's like dominoes, but better. Um, uh, it's quite self-explanatory. You're matching, you're matching tiles together and you win points depending on how big your areas are. Uh, patchwork, you are building the world's prettiest quilt and you've got tetro Tetromino pieces. And there's something quite satisfying about um, games that have these kind of Tetris pieces and how they fit together. It's quite zen. Exploding Kittens. Um, I think, I swear this has like got some record for like the biggest Kickstarter game ever or, or it did maybe at one point. It's from the people who made the oatmeal. And the game's 
the game's fine, to be honest. Like, I mean, it's nothing. I don't think it's anything incredible. I mean, the, the cards and the art are quite, quite funny, I suppose. Fox in the Forest duet. Uh, Fox in the Forest is, was quite a big game a couple of years ago. It's a two-player trick-taking game, um, but this is the cooperative version, and you're basically um, not allowed to speak. So you don't know who's going to win the round, and you're moving up and down, saving treasures from the forest or something. I don't know. I read the story. Something about a musician turning people back. I don't know. But it's good. I enjoy it. There we go. Oh, Bear and Puck. That's another one of those kind of uh, satisfying Tetris games that I really enjoy. Uh, As all is about making. Uh, what's the story? Like you're making a tiled wall for the Portuguese palace or something. This game is is brutal. So basically you have to take uh, coloured tiles, but whenever you choose a tile to take, you have to take all of that colour, regardless of how many there are. And if you don't have room for them on your board, then you get minus points for it. And so you can really stitch up other characters. But <laughs> you look at this game, you just think it's a nice, nice pretty game about making pretty patterns. And then you can just screw people over. Disney villainous. This game is so good. Like, I, I have no real strong feelings one way or the other for Disney. Like, it's, it's all right. I watched it as a kid, and it's fine. Uh, I'm not one of these Disney super fans or one of these Disney haters. I literally don't care one way or the other. Um, but this game uh, is asymmetrical. So everyone plays as a Disney villain, and you all have your own goals and your own ways of playing. Uh, again, it's one of those things that maybe there's not not so much interaction. Uh, there is interaction with other players. You're you're taking cards from their deck and screwing them up as you can. But I feel like it could do with maybe uh, a bit more interaction. But it, it's great. I definitely recommend it. Um, that's around the wrong way. But this game's called Catch the Moon. That is a dexterity game about um, <sighs> uh, balancing ladders, and uh, it's good. My wife really loves that one. It's it's kind of cool. Um, scroll. Oh, it's another version of scroll. Um, okay, I think that's the shelf done. And now we've got some <laughs> other games. So I got Gloomhaven. This game is a beast. I haven't I haven't played it yet. Uh, I bought this. Uh, I finally bought this uh, last week. And what I've actually bought is um, a sticker pack. Because uh, as you're playing the game, you put stickers to it, stickers onto things as they change. And obviously that means the game's permanently marked. So I've actually bought separately. It was only a tenner uh, collection of removable stickers. Um, so you don't you don't change the game permanently. So if I ever wanted to sell this, it'll be it'll be as good as new. Um, uh, the wife bought me this for Christmas. Now she she bought me she bought me this for the models. Uh, I'm a huge Dark Souls fan. Um, so she actually bought me this because uh, she's going to paint all the figurines for me and put them on display. She bought me pff, so many expansions, I'll show you them in a minute. She literally bought them for the figures and then uh, she said, well if I bought the figures I'm, I might as well buy the game as well. Um, Wingspan and the uh, European expansion, uh, a game about building an aviary. And the wife absolutely loves birds. She's got, she's covered in bird tattoos. So this is a no-brainer. No but the game's actually very good. Uh, really been really enjoying playing that. And then the, <laughs> these are all the uh, Dark Souls uh, expansions that I got uh, yesterday for Christmas. And there's just so many figures, and I can't wait to get them out on display somewhere. Um, got given this for Christmas yet? This is cool. The uh, Chronicles of Crime. Um, it's kind of like uh, Sherlock consulting detective and Cluedo, you're trying to find out, solve different crimes, um, but you're actually using your phone to scan QR codes uh, to interview people and uh, look closer at evidence and stuff. And it, uh, and it works well. Um, I've played a few games that use phones and apps and it, is, it got to the point where what's the point in the board game? There was no need, but I think this is a good, good mix of the two uh, types of gaming, uh, mobile and uh, board game. Uh, poetry for Neanderthals. Uh, this is another um, oatmeal game. So basically, you have to do. You'll have a word to describe, uh, say like um, campfire, and you're only allowed to use one word, uh, one syllable words. So for campfire, you might say man in tent with hot flame, something like that. And if you uh, you get this inflatable <laughs> no stick, and if you <laughs> 
if you use uh, words with more than one syllable, the person bonks you on the head with it. And yeah, it's one of those silly drinking games, but um, yeah, it's good fun. And then we've got um, Exit, the board um, Exit, which is an escape room game. And we're going to play this today, I think. It's a one and done game. Uh, I think this was like 12 quid. They're not expensive, but you can only play them once because you're sort of uh, drawing on it and tearing up pieces. And obviously, once you've done the puzzles, you know how the puzzles work. But yeah, whew, that was, um, I think that's everything. My goodness. So yeah, that's my, my collection. As of Boxing Day, 2020, yeah, 2020, that's when we are. 